famously, Richard Gregory, uh, Roma's uh, supervisor, made the same observation about most of perception. The brain is making an inference to the best explanation. And this wonderful uh, illusion, it turns out that square A and square B are actually the same color. And it's very easy to show if, if I could manipulate it. You just move them together. And, uh, and they are, in fact, the same. But of course, the brain infers that you've got a uniform checkerboard and that the pillar is, is casting a shadow. Inference to the best explanation. And I'm sure you've all seen the little bio walker, just a bunch of dots. The brain infers that it's a person running along. Now, with regard then to morals, and here I think I, I can come back to the basic Spinoza point, we constantly make inference to the best decision. We do it in a prudential fashion. I ought to get my tires inflated. Uh, I don't have a fundamental rule about getting my tires inflated. I, I see that they're low. I think that it could be unwise to run the car with low tires. I ought to uh, get my tires inflated. But this also happens constantly, regularly, in the most normal of cases in the moral domain. I see my neighbor's lights are on. Uh, and he left his car lights on. I ought to tell him. I'm walking through the bush. I see a grizzly with, uh, with cubs. When I emerge from the bush, I see hikers coming in. I know I ought to tell them. Not that I unconditionally ought to tell them. Not that, that I have a fundamental moral law. It's just that that's what I have come. Those are the, that's the expression of a skill that I have come to acquire as a result of living in this culture. So the story that I want to tell is that most moral behavior does not rest on a fundamental moral ought. And the reason that we're able to pick and choose from the Bible is that we come as a result of socialization, background education, and the fundamental wiring that evolution provides we're able to say, despite what it says in Exodus, it's wrong to stone your child to death for dishonoring you. I mean, it does say that you do that. I've never done that, and I would never do that. <laughs> uh, it also says in Exodus that you shall not suffer a witch to live. I will not, you know, go on a witch hunt. I will not do that. And that's, I think, ex exactly what what Steve Nadler was saying, which is that we bring a huge amount of moral knowledge to bear. We acquire it from imitation of our peers, from modeling ourselves after our parents. We acquire it enormously through stories and through observation of what happens to people. And uh, I mean, part of the reason that we're fascinated by Leon, uh, Leona Hemsley going to jail for cheating on her taxes is that we think, God, you know, that can really happen. Uh, and it, it's those sorts of things that over time, and in a way we don't understand, just as we don't really understand how factual knowledge is integrated and made more or less coherent, we don't really understand the mechanisms behind that kind of learning. But there are people who are working, of course, uh, on the neurobiology of these things, including people uh, in Terry's lab. So ultimately, I think uh, Spinoza needn't say that it's always in our interest, although in a certain very deep sense that, that Richard Dawkins, I think, particularly understands. Of course, ultimately, our social behavior is as it is, and our social wiring is as it is, you know, because Mother Nature cares about the genes. So there is, I think, a very important understanding of the nature of morality that has nothing to do with religion. And like Steve, I think it's, I, 
I think it's really worrisome to say that you'll burn in hell if you don't do it, so you got to do it. Um, I think there are better ways of ensuring moral motivation than scaring the crap out of people. Okay, thanks. Thank you.